Hey, Caleb, how you doing, brother? Hey, brother, I am doing well. Happy Wednesday to you, uh, and happy uh, happy Wednesday out there to all of our veterans joining us on this uh, on this exciting Facebook Live. We've got a great topic here for you today, but uh, yeah, no pleasure being here with you, Andy. Uh, thanks so much for co-hosting with me today. Uh, how are things in your neck of the woods? They are cold and rainy, brother. We went from 70-something degrees yesterday to a thunderstorm last night, and now I'm down here in a hoodie because it's freezing down here. In yeah, no, I hear you. How about your neck of the woods over there in Tennessee? Yeah, everything is good just outside of Nashville. Uh, nice and sunny, a little windy today. I think we're getting that uh, I think we're getting that storm that you all had last night uh, rolling in later on today. So, um, but, uh, but we're going to have a lot of fun here today before all that happens. Um, pleasure again pleasure hosting with you today thanks so much always brother uh, happy wednesday to you and again to all of our veterans joining us on this facebook live um again we have a really really important topic today that we're going to be covering um you know discussing here uh during during this hour or so that we're going to have together um but first let's go ahead and, and take a minute um if if you're all viewing us on facebook live from wherever you are around the world please check in with your location maybe your branch of service um, and the years you serve. We'd love to give, you, give uh, hopefully a few of you a shout out here as we get this uh, as we get this Facebook Live started. Um, Andy, while, while our veterans are doing that, would you mind just sharing a little bit about yourself, uh, your military history, how you came to VA Claims Insider, and maybe a little bit about your role here uh, within our organization? Sure. Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Porter. Um, I am obviously a coach here at VA Claims Insider. Um, a little bit about my military experience. I joined back in 04, got out in 2019. So I was there kind of for the height of both Iraq and Afghanistan, deployed several times. Um, airborne infantry, airborne Todd, I see you in there. Let's go, brother. Um, you know, did a bunch of schools, bunch of deployments, um, Afghanistan, Iraq. I lived in Spain for a while as a, uh, as a uh, you know, as an instructor. Um, did a lot, a lot of fun stuff. And um, I'm 100% P&T myself, um, you know, working with guys like Caleb and, you know, he's, he's my team leader, Team Fury all the way. Um, you know, it's just, this is a, it's been a mind blowing experience for me to help out veterans and get you guys through the process because it's a hard one. It's an arduous one. And, um, I'm so glad you guys are here with us to learn a little bit. Hopefully we can make your, uh, tonight's claim a little more smooth and uh, answer any questions you have. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Andy, you've been here with VA Claims Insider for about a year, a little just over a, a year now. Just a little over a year. Yep, I was in. I came to in February of 2021. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, love it, love it. Happy to have you aboard here uh, with our organization. Obviously, happy to have you on my team. Uh, it's a pleasure working with you each and every day. So, uh, uh, just give you a little shout out there. Thank you for all <laughs> you do for, for all of our veterans uh, oh, to jump on board with our organization. Um, uh, so again, thanks for sharing a little bit about yourself, a little bit about myself. Um, I served in the Marine Corps. I was in the infantry from 2010 to 2015, deployed a few times, been around the world twice, basically. Um, I served on the West Coast for a little bit, and then I was um, I moved to my second duty station over to Camp Lejeune in North Carolina uh, and finished out my time over there with uh, with one eight. So a huge shout out to one eight. My brother's over there. Um, maybe we have a few on this uh, on this Facebook Live here today. Uh, when I got out, I was at um, I was rated at thirty percent with my disability. Um, I was able to work myself up to eighty percent, um, and then I then I started hitting some roadblocks. I started hitting some obstacles. Um, I felt I was underrated, and I felt like I you know I deserved to be recognized for a little bit more uh, on the disability side. So. So I ended up seeking out VA Claims Insider. I saw, you know, I saw um, an ad. I think it was on Facebook or maybe YouTube, and uh, started doing my research about the organization, about the company. I decided to to sign up as a veteran client, and it was the best decision I made for myself and my family. Um, my coach, who uh, who partnered up with me, was able to help me close the gap from eighty to one hundred percent permanent in total in about six seven months. And this was all during COVID, so. Um, things were things were pretty delayed and drawn out at that time as well. But anyway, um, this company changed my life and my family's life forever. So um, when they offered me a position here, I said, yes, absolutely. I want to share my success um, with every other veteran that I can. So I love being a part of this organization. 
um, helping helping our veterans achieve that life change that they so uh, so richly deserve. So um, with that said, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about our organization, kind of the agenda for today. We'll talk a little bit about more uh, a little bit more about our organization here at VA Claims Insider, or what you do get. Um, with a personal coach, if that's the route you decide to uh, to jump on board with us with, if, if that's what you need, um, we are here to help. We're looking forward to helping you and we are ready and willing to uh, to get you the help that you deserve. Uh, let's go ahead and take a minute and read off where some of our viewers are from. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I see. I see. I got a couple 82nd Airborne folks in here already. I got, uh, let's see, Philip, you're in Kansas City. I'm right, I'm right up the street in Parkville here, just a suburb right outside of Kansas City. So nice. good to have some guys in here. Let's see what you got, Caleb. A couple, I see a couple uh, Marine Corps guys in here. Yeah, too. I was going to say, Semper, Vi, Semper Fi to my fellow Marines and devil dogs out there. I see Don checking in, uh, served back in the 70s, the 90s. He's out in uh, Southern California. So thanks, Don, for jumping in with us today. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. Bunch of Army. Uh, glad of to Force. have you all aboard. Bunch of Navy. Hey, J. Michael, I see uh, Navy serve four years. Thank you so much for your service. You know, from one veteran to another, um, that's how I love to open up these these conversations is, is, you know, from one veteran to another, thank you so much for your service. Um, our country would not be where we are today without without you standing up, raising your right hand and serving our, our wonderful nation. So absolutely. We love you guys. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us. And, you know, it's, uh, it's our honor to carry on the torch and, uh, you know, even though we're out now, we're ne not necessarily carrying a torch, but we're still trying to, uh, do our, do our best by our fellow, uh, brothers and sisters in arms. So thank absolutely. you guys so much for being here. Absolutely. Um, a few more checking in with us, Rick, I see you, uh, Semper Fi checking in from Memphis, Tennessee served in the, uh, served in the nineties. Glad to see you here, brother. Go Navy. Yes. <laughs> Eileen, Air Force in the house. Love it. <laughs> Welcome, Eileen. Love it here. Got a, got a couple people dropping their ratings. Got some uh, 90 percenters here. Um, got a couple hundred percenters. Hey, congratulations uh, being recognized for what you deserve. It's not uh, not an easy road, um, but if you, if you served, you deserve. Uh, you deserve what you uh, what you should be getting from the VA legally, morally, and ethically. So that's what we uh, that's the mantra we stand by. I uh, see Mark Nichols checking in, Army Third Infantry Division, excellent uh, down in sunny, hot Clearwater, Florida. That's oh, awesome. Man, I miss it. I miss. I'm about to have to relinquish my Florida driver's license for Missouri, and it's hurting. It's hurting. <laughs> I bet it is. I bet it is. Oh, that's uh, that's too funny. Um, well, let's go ahead and um, well, you know, people can still drop uh, drop in the chat box where you're from if you want to want to leave a few questions there in the chat box. We're gonna try to do our best to get to every single question. That may not always happen. Um, we may have to get to some of these comments after after our Facebook Live is over. Uh, but feel free to drop your questions in the chat box here. Um, Andy, do you want to go ahead and kind of explain a little bit about what we do here at VA Claims Insider, uh, going right in line with our SEAM method, um, and then maybe what you get if you were to jump on as a as a veteran client here with our organization? Sure, absolutely. So just a, a real quick recap, not to go too deep into the weeds. Um, what we do is we strategize, we educate, and we help you provide medical evidence if you need it, right? We partner with a great company called Telemedica, and we can send you over to them if you need certain things, right? Uh, whether it's a nexus letter or maybe a diagnosis of, of certain things. Um, so we can, we can help you gather medical evidence in that, in that regard. Um, once you get, once you sign up as an elite member, you're going to get one-on-one -on -one coaching. You're going to get a strategy session. You're going to get help with your claim submissions, and you're going to get coached through your CMP prep. And then after that, you basically just wait for the VA's decision, right? So, you know, you get tons of education materials here, lots of, you know, strategizing with your coach again, and, you know, help with, again, help with your claim submission, which, you know, to the VA's credit has become relatively simple these days, right, Caleb? I mean, the right, VA website right. is, has been streamlined and, you know, you got to give them credit for that. Um, you know, there's live classes via Zoom almost every day of the week. Sometimes, you know, on uh, Sundays or take the day off. Uh, typically there's classes on Saturdays. Um, noon classes on Saturdays, right? We've got typically noon, three o'clock, uh, and all these are central standard times. So we got just classes throughout the week, seven o'clock classes sometimes, you know, so just if you, if you're at work or if you're overseas or whatever, you know, there's, there's certain classes you can jump into and they're just a, a great resource. Um, you know, every morning, Monday through Friday, coffee with the coaches at AM. That's another good one. Um, I know a lot of folks from overseas jump into that too in their evenings. So yeah, just uh, take advantage. We've got lots of these classes, lots of these Facebook lives. I'm sure most of you have, you know, seen some of the YouTube videos. So 
get up with us on Instagram, Facebook. I think Brian's on TikTok now, or the, the company's right. on TikTok, not just Brian. Yep. So um, our founder and CEO, in case you, anybody's wondering who Brian is. Um, so yeah, we're all over social media, anywhere we can reach vets. Yeah, yeah, absolutely love it. Yeah, so if you need if you need our help, if you need one on one coaching, um, you know, definitely reach out to vaclaimsinsider.com. dot uh, com. Read through read through basically everything Andy just covered and uh, and, and and identify if we're a, if we're a good fit for you. Um, we're again ready and willing uh, and able to help you uh, file your claims. Um, and again, pick up that medical evidence uh, if needed to help support your claims. So I already see some questions going in the chat box. Again, we've got a great topic here for you today. Uh, we're going to be talking about tinnitus. We're going to be breaking down what the symptoms look like or what they sound like and uh, and then how to file for tinnitus. So we'll go over some really good details there and then we'll go over what that compensation and pension exam looks like, that CMP exam, which is what we describe around here as the most important day of the entire claims process, no matter what condition you're filing for. So again, I see a lot of questions here. I think we're going to be able to answer a lot of these, um, a lot of these questions as we get going and we we may have to circle back around to them, but um, if you've been denied for tinnitus, um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Oh, and then again, towards the end, we'll talk about filing secondary conditions off of your tinnitus if you already have tinnitus service connected. So tinnitus, uh, let's get into it, Andy. Um, let's let's talk about this. Yeah, I do have a rating for 10% for tinnitus. You know, uh, it kind of all started when, you know, I was in the infantry, right? And so, you know, just kind of exposed to loud noises everywhere you go, especially in the airborne. So whether it's small arms fire um, from your M4, your pistol, your machine guns, um, law rockets, you know, javelin missiles, any of the shouldered fired weapons to the, you know, the jet engine noise from the C1, um, from the C-17s, um, you know, the <clears throat> prop blast from the C-130s, you're not always going to wear, you know, hearing pro, um, whether the military issued you, you know, I know there's a big thing with some of those, uh, M 13, um, you know, uh, earplugs that they, that they were issuing back in the day and they weren't really good hear, hearing protection. Some units don't have any hearing protection at all issued out. So really, you know, that's kind of how my exposure happened, whether it was deployments with, you know, getting mortared or like I said, all the small arms fire, the, the aircraft, what, whatever loud noise. And I know there's a lot of mechanics, you know, the, 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 the engine noises, the, the generator noises, maybe you were, you know, just maybe you were in a, in a, in the bottom of a ship Alarm doing fire. stuff like that, you know, with the loud, what any of the loud noises that you're just, any loud noises that you were around can create, you know, kind of some kind of hearing loss or some type kind of ringing in your ears. And I know, I remember to this day um, when mine started and that, that was in, you know, <clears throat> OSUT, right? Right. When you're first started off, they give you these little, these little, uh, crappy for lack of a better word foam ear protection and you know sitting there on a 240 bravo and then just the ears just ringing and that stuff you know i didn't know how to wear them they just kind of fell out of my ears so ringing in my ears started then and it's persisted to this day i remember laying in bed the other night i don't know about you travis but laying in bed the other night i was just all of a sudden and i was like oh my god here it goes again so yeah it, it's it could be intermittent it could be constant but for me it's about it's intermittent and i i do have a 10 percent uh yeah. percent rating for that what about you travis Absolutely. I've got a 10% service connection for uh, tinnitus as well. Uh, it was my first VA disability. And um, yeah, just for, for me, it's a constant ringing and buzzing in my ear that will not ever go away. It's just always there. It's always present. Now, with that being said, um, there's times that I notice it more. So like this is key. Like when you're going to a tinnitus CMP exam, like you don't ever say, oh, I have tinnitus sometimes. Like, that's not real. You don't have tinnitus then. It's always there. Mm -hmm. It's just that there's going to be times of the day in which you're going to notice it more for several different reasons. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So, like, like, just right now, I hear a low, there's a low kind of thing. But like I said the other night, when I gave you that example, it just started going. Zzz. So it's it's like, it's always a low thing for me. And then it, it intensifies at other times. So for right. me, that's my I don't know about you, you know, but yeah. like for... I think we were talking one time, but doesn't your tinnitus really start um, bothering you when it gets really, really quiet when you, oh, when yeah. you can hear? Oh, yeah. Mostly at night. Yeah. When I'm laying in bed, that's kind of when it'll start. When you'll notice it more. But like I said, other times it kicks into high gear and it's just like, wow, this is awful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and talking about my symptoms. Yeah. I really notice it when it's um 
when it's really quiet in the room. So either I'm trying to fall asleep and I sleep with a sound machine on. I, I just bought a, a $10 sound machine at Walmart and, and I have to sleep with that on. So it cancels out that noise. But yeah. you know, uh, during quiet times, uh, either in the house or when I'm having a conversation with other people or maybe uh, a quiet section of a movie, <laughs> that's when I really hear it pick up that ringing, um, that ringing sound in my ears that that's generally what I hear in both my ears. So, and you know, yeah. it, it can sometimes be triggered by loud noises, right? So if, um, mm -hmm. driving, driving in your car and you're listening to music, uh, maybe on a long road trip, you have the music up a little, a little too loud, you get out and all of a sudden it's there just zzz, yeah. right. So loud noises can also trigger that for me personally. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, did you already, I'm uh, sorry for that technical difficulty. Did you oh, already sure. talk about your noise exposure while you're in service? Yes. Yeah. I talked about, you know, the small arms fire, the mortars, yeah. the jet engine noises, all that kind of stuff. And, and I even went into, you know, for machinist mates, stuff like that down in the hole of a ship. If you're a mechanic working around generators, loud, you know, torque, torque wrenches, all that kind of stuff. Anything that creates a loud, loud noise, you know, yeah. can, can affect you, you know, it, yeah. it really can. Yep, exactly. And, and just like Andy was saying, you know, that, um, you know, when I served, when I was serving, I was, like I said, in the infantry and those loud noise explored weapons, weapon qualification, weapons firing down range, um, explosion, explosions that I was, you know, close to, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> even sitting in the back of, of vehicles. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, standing by with loud engines, diesel engines running behind your ears, that can all be part of that noise, exposure, right. especially and, if there's a lack of hearing protection or maybe exactly. adequate hearing protection. And, so, and, you know, even, even with like, it, I'm glad you said the word inadequate hearing protection, because even with those expensive Peltors, sometimes, sometimes they fail, you know? Um, so, and a lot of times, 99% of the time I would hazard to guess the military is not handing out those expensive Peltors to folks, right? No. They're, they're giving you those little foam inserts and you know, sometimes those M13 things that they gave us, those just aren't adequate. Right? Yeah, so, no, no, not yeah, at all. They fall not out. They're not reliable. They don't, they're not fitted for your ears. Yeah. So right. inadequate hearing protection for sure. Right, right, exactly. Um, so, okay, so a little bit about our exposure. Uh, now, now tinnitus is one of the most common claim conditions. There are over 800 rateable conditions with the VA, but this is, you know, tinnitus is the number one claim uh, condition from our experience around here within the, uh, our, our organization. It affects a huge amount of the veteran, uh, veteran population. Um, so we, uh, you know, again, a really, really important topic, really, really important subject here. Um, I do want to address, um, some recent proposal changes that we, we've been hearing about. The VA has been sending emails about our veterans have been reaching out to us, uh, about it. Basically what the VA is proposing, and this is only in the proposal phase, it still has to go through. Uh, what's known as a congressional approval uh, process, which may take and maybe a drawn out process may take a little while. But but basically, the new proposal is is lumping tinnitus in under hearing loss. So basically, what they're going to say is tinnitus is no longer a standalone condition. It's going to be a symptom of hearing loss and you'll have to be approved for hearing loss with a symptom of tinnitus falling in under that hearing loss umbrella. Again, it's we're getting out ahead of this just because we want our we want everyone watching um, to to get their claim filed for tinnitus as yeah. soon as possible. Yeah, get that get in now filed as soon as possible before any VA changes come down, before any congressional approval happens. Um, really, that sense of urgency needs needs to be picked up if you are suffering with tinnitus symptoms and you still have yet to file a first time claim or if you've been denied tinnitus. We'll talk about um, what kind of claim to file if you've been de denied tinnitus. So absolutely. Um, if you, again, if you need our help, we just dropped our elite membership link in the chat box. So so jump on there. Um, anything yeah. to add to that, Andy? Yeah, yeah. Get with a coach. I mean, I know some of like I, you know I started off. This is an arduous process. So get you know sign up if you haven't already. Get get a coach that coach will will guide you with the easiest fastest way um that is tailored to you to get you know get your tinnitus claim in because everybody's different everybody's case is different right caleb so yeah um, get with a coach get strategized and um you know let's get after it yep absolutely okay so let's talk a little bit about tinnitus um what exactly is it so um ringing hissing buzzing sound in your ears um, you may hear them in one ear. I hear them in both ear. I hear the sounds in both ears. Um, it, 
you know, so the noise, this noise exposure we've been talking about is what causes it. Now we're just covering a little bit of the symptoms. Um, it's usually, um, it's usually related to that, again, that noise exposure. So we definitely want to, um, to when you're telling your story um, or you're writing a personal statement, you maybe you're gonna write up a personal statement to go along with your claim, you really wanna focus on what that noise exposure is and then you wanna describe what your symptoms are like. So if you have ringing, buzzing, clicking, hissing, humming, any other sounds that are in your ears and your ears alone, you know, the sound isn't heard by anybody else. It's not external, it's all coming from your own, um, uh, your own hearing. Um, the maximum rating you can get is 10% uh, for tinnitus. You can be, you can be rated at 0%. We do have a, a few veterans who say, yeah, I was, I was awarded tinnitus, but it, it didn't result in a, in a rating increase or any sort of rating. It, it stayed at 10%. Well, in that case, maybe what you need to do is go through another hearing exam, talk about how your symptoms have gotten worse and, and uh, request that increase. Uh, to go from zero to 10%. And the VA may recognize that your symptoms have gotten worse and, and rate you um, at the maximum level, which again, maxes out at 10%. Right. Um, let's talk is, about the causes besides noise exposure. Andy, what, what do you think about um, some of these causes we're going to talk about? Some of the causes can just be, you know, regular old hearing loss, right? Um, if you've ever been in an accident where maybe you've experienced whiplash, um, if you've ever like, you know, I remember I had a concussion, um, and one of my first jumps and I had the ring into my ears right after I hit the ground. Um, so head injuries, TBIs, right? Um, if you have Meniere's disease, um, that can cause an inner ear, just it's, which is an inner ear disorder that um, can be caused by abnormal fluid in your inner ear that can cause tinnitus. So there's, you know, there's a myriad of, of reasons. And those are the, those are the main ones that, that we know of. Um, and, and we do know also there's no cure. There's, there's no cure for tinnitus and the test is extremely subjective. So there's no real, there's not, there's not a, a meter that can put up to your head and say, hmm, okay, you know, we're measuring the tinnitus here. There, there's really no measure. So they're basically, you know, it's going off of your, you know, your integrity and saying, Hey, look, I have this issue. Um, this is what caused this issue. And, um, you know, that's kind of what they're going forward on as far as, far as the CMP exam. Um, the CMP exam for tinnitus, um, they are coupled with hearing tests, and we'll we'll get kind of there more in a few minutes. Um, sorry, we're, it looks like we're having some technical difficulties on Caleb's end. That remember that storm is uh, is rolling his way. It's, it's probably already there right now. We had it here in Kansas City last night. So, oh, uh, there he is. We got him back. I was just saying. I think is this. I was wondering if the storm is hitting you already, and it's kind of interfering with your yeah uh, your internet. Okay. Apparently, apparently that's go what's going on. Yeah, again, sorry about the. Uh, that's fine. No, I just I went over the I went over the causes and kind of explained okay. how there's no cure and how the test is subjective. So, yeah. um, you know, uh, anything that you okay. wanted to add there, brother? No, no, I think I think uh, I think that's good. Yeah, um, the, like Andy said, there is no cure. Um, te the test is subjective. Um, now that the testing really comes down to a series of questions. Um, during your compensation and pension exam, which is usually coupled with a hearing test. Um, so you'll go sit in a soundproof box and uh, and click the buttons whenever you hear the tones. And then, yeah, exactly. And, and everyone, um, um, everyone's been doing that uh, for <laughs> since since forever, really. So um, anyway, yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. So the, the tinnitus portion of that um, again, is, is a series of questions. We'll, um, we'll do, go ahead and dive into that in a few minutes. Um, we, do have, um, we do have a helpful link here um, if, it, if it can get dropped in the comments block. Um, the, the noise exposure list, okay? So the VA um, established their FAST letter back in 2010 um, and said, okay, based on your MOS, um, your MOS job description, you either fall in, in one of three categories across the noise exposure list. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, you can you can be um, you can be exposed to uh, high, moderate or low amount of noise throughout your uh, throughout your job or your MOS during the military during your military uh, time. So anyway, uh, feel free to check out that list um, and, and see where your MOS falls um, on that noise exposure list. Um, and basically, the list concedes noise exposure based on your MOS, again, in those three categories, the high probability, the moderate, or low. Um, even if you fall in the low category, you can still be service-connected 
um, again, if it's on the low end of that list, uh, right. again, so, everyone who joins the military goes through some sort of weapons qualification, right, Andy? So, yep, that's, that's what I was yeah. getting ready to jump on. Like, hey, even if I had a, you know, if I was away from the flight line and away from the ranges and all that kind of stuff, you know, and I had a, a job that was more administrative or more, you know, just kind of, you know, out without a lot of, without a lot of noise suppression, um, Every year, right? Typically, every year, I would say some, some biannually, you're going to go to a pistol range or a rifle range, and you're going to get that same little tiny thing to put in your ear that's probably not going to work very well. So probably not. Don't count yourself out if you didn't have a loud, a loud, loud job. All right. Right. Exactly. Oh, and it looks like uh, the the storm has taken hold for uh, for Coach McClagan. Um, so ways to be service connected. Let's kind of go over that a little bit. Um, so obviously an event and service, right? So for me, it would have been the ranges, the deployments, all that fun stuff. Um, having an acoustic trauma while in service, right? So documented in your service records, um, basically for a direct basis, right? So rifle range, weapons quals. A lot of us, you know, I, when I got out, I have my me book right here, right? So a me book full of you know, all of, all of your, uh, your qualifications, your, your, your certificates, all the training, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I kept everything. I'm that guy. Right. Um, and you keep stuff for a reason typically. So, you know, have your rifle quals, um, have your pistol quals, whatever. Right. Uh, if you worked in motor T and you, you know, you had, uh, you know, licenses to drive these trucks, right. The five ton tank, the tanks, um, you know, exposed, if you were exposed to diesel engines, right. So if you're a, a, a um, uh, a mechanic for a generator or a mechanic for an aircraft and you or if you were just a flight line personnel, right? Maybe your security forces and you're on the flight line guarding an aircraft and they run those engines hot um, stuff like that. Right. So if you work near an airline on an aircraft carrier, uh, maybe on a battleship when they fire those big cannons, you know, you all know you guys you guys serve. So, you know, all of the stuff that uh, that you were exposed to. Right. Um, ranges, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it ranges on German weapons quals. I see somebody dropped in there. Um, so, you know, it also, you need a diagnosis, right? So you've got to get diagnosed. And a lot of times that can happen at a CMP exam for tinnitus. Um, and you know, you're going to need right. The, the Kalusa triangle. So you're going to need the in-service event, which we just went over the diagnosis of tinnitus, you know, basically saying you have the tinnitus and the ring in your ears. We went, we went over kind of how subjective that was. Um, and also the nexus linking the two, right? So oftentimes, you know, there'll be, you know, something saying a, a doctor's opinion saying, you know, this, this condition was caused by this. So in my opinion, you know, this condition is due to military service due to this, you know, this, uh, aggravation or event, right? So, um, how to apply for tinnitus, right? You're going to, you got to remember, there's no time limit as to when one can file for tinnitus. So if you were in, in the sixties, you know, and you still don't have a tinnitus claim, there's no time limit. So don't worry about that. You haven't missed the ship just yet. All right. Um, as of now, you won't miss the ship. Um, you'll need your DD-214, right? So usually enough evidence to secure a CMP exam, right? So the VA, be registered with the VA, be on their radar, have your DD-214 if you're not. So just be able to prove that you were in the service, right? So, and obviously a personal statement goes a long, long way. Um, it'll establish a nexus, right? Uh, what to include in your personal statement. You want to say what happened, right? So for me, well, I was on these ranges and I was on these deployments. Um, you know, I was in Iraq, Afghanistan, Fort Bragg, Fort Benning, wherever all the, wherever all that stuff took place. Uh, that's when were you exposed? Boom, just nailed that. Uh, and what noises were you exposed to? So you'll go into detail, you know, small arms fire, machinery, um, you know, what have you. And then your current symptoms. So I would say something to the effect of, well, my symptoms started then, they continue to this day. It's the ringing in my ears, the, the hissing, the buzzing, the ringing, you know, the clicking, um, all whatever, whatever, whatever you want to use to, uh, to explain that, right? So tips for a CMP exam, you know, CMP exam, again, the most important day of the entire VA claims process is the CMP exam. Um, don't focus on your hearing loss, right? This is not a hearing loss CMP exam. Typically it is a tinnitus um, exam, right? <laughs> Sorry. Um, so you're going to, you're going to want to, you know, talk about, Hey, Dr. Travis, uh, you're going to want to talk about when it happened, right? Basically everything that you talked about in that, uh, that personal statement, you're going to reiterate it in this, in the tinnitus CNP exam. What happened? What noises were, uh, what noises were you exposed to? When did your tinnitus start? And what are your current symptoms, right? So Andy, again, I want to add, I want to sure. add to this, right? I want to add to many of the great points, um, that you bring up and, um, Dr. Travis here, uh, many of you probably see me on other Facebook lives, just helping, um, brother Caleb out. He, he, uh, 
the storm knocked his internet straight out. So going to come in and give Andy some backup. But um, tonight, this is one of the topics I'm actually more passionate about myself. And um, I've had an opportunity to help um, hundreds and hundreds of veterans with tinnitus, right? And I've helped people who had previously been turned down for tinnitus. I've helped them overturn that. And back to what Caleb was saying um, earlier and what Andy just spoke on. Yeah, a lot of people, they go into that tinnitus CMP exam and they focus on the wrong, wrong things. You know, and it was mentioned earlier that the, the CMP exam is the most important moment of the claims process. <laughs> well, that's 100% truth. It is 100% truth. Now, the cool thing is you don't have to be out there and make all those mistakes that a lot of people made. You can get the help of a coach. They'll walk you right through that process. It, we're going to put our link up here, you know, sign up. You're under no obligation to talk to a representative of our company. That this is the right program for you, but don't make some of those same mistakes. And we'll go ahead and share with you what some of those mistakes are. Number one, I have seen people get rejected for tinnitus because they try to say that it's just in one ear or the other, right? I would say that in most situations, that ringing, that ringing noise, that buzzing noise, it's in both ears, okay? Another thing is that tinnitus is not like a light bulb, right? You can't just turn it on or off. It's always there. So if you say, oh, I just have tinnitus at night or in the morning, they're going to be like, well, I don't know what you have, but it's not tinnitus. It's always present. Yes, when things are extremely quiet, you're going to hear it more. You're going to notice it more, per se, right? You're going to notice it more. And like for me, um, you know, I've been in relationships with girls that have had kids. And um, one of the hardest parts for me was like when a kid just screams randomly, that high pitched scream, it'll make my tinnitus go from bad to worse um, for a long period of time. So I can't deal like, really, really loud noises or screeches or, or screams, anything unexpected. Andy, I don't know, like, is, is, does your tinnitus annoy you that way? So, yeah, um, and I, I kind of touched on it earlier. Whenever I'm in the car, for instance, going to the gym or if I'm in a long car ride, like in the summertime and I've got the windows down and the stereo up and it's like more than 45 minutes, right? You get out and all of a sudden, bzzz, it's just really loud because loud noise can aggravate that tinnitus. Um, just like you hear it, you, you notice it more when it's dead quiet you're going to aggravate it by having that loud noise um, echo. So yeah, absolutely. So it's all speaking to the symptoms and at that CMP exam. And I, I know a lot of you here in the veteran community, I know a lot of you like to hunt. A lot of you love your guns. Okay. And um, a lot of you love to shoot those guns. You go to the range. Heck, some of you are probably law enforcement officers right now. Do we have any law enforcement officers in the audience watching this or former I'd be law willing to bet we have at least a handful. <laughs> yeah. Construction workers, yep. things of that nature. Look, not telling you to lie. I would never tell you to lie. But what I'm going to tell you is if you go in there and you talk about how, you know, you love listening to really, really loud rock and roll and you're always in the front seat at the concerts and you're always, you know, you you shoot all the time constantly. They're going to agree that you have tinnitus, but then they're going to try to say not service connected. You have tinnitus because you like to go to loud rock and roll concerts. Right. You like to shoot your own guns, right? Exactly. You want to say, my tinnitus started here in my service and continues to this day, right? So it started there, it continues. You don't need to feed them anything they don't need to know. It's not their business what music you listen to. It's not their business um, how often you go hunting. It's just not their business. Exactly. Exactly. And most of the time, they're not going to come out looking for that. But a lot of our veterans, they just walk in and they just start, I call it diary of the mouth. They just start, blah, 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 blah. don't have diary of the mouth. Just go in there, answer the questions that they ask, stay on point and get through it. OK, so you're just not really going into, oh, I like to shoot. I like to listen to rock and roll. Right. You're focusing on how it happened while you're in military service. Now, here's something that comes up a lot. Right. Um, I was in the I was in the reserve component, the guard. Um, but for a lot of you who were active duty, um, a lot of you, maybe you did like a four year term. Okay. And this is just an example. Well, you might not know exactly the date that you got tonight. So unless it was like, you know, a bomb went off right next to you, then that might be a different story. You're probably not going to know, just know like the day that it happened. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you provide ranges. You talk about range of times within your, your CMP exam or anything that you document. So. For example, 
let's say that you served in the army from 2002 to 2006. Okay. So if you serve from 02 to 06 and you have tinnitus, but you, you really can't pinpoint it, then what you want to do is you want to pick about a mid origin during that service. So you would say, you know, um, at, or, at or around 2004, I noticed that I had a constant ringing and buzzing in my ear that would never go away because you're not going to remember the exact month and year. You know what I mean? Right. So that's a good, that's a rule of thumb that you can um, try to use. You can provide a range or you could just say, oh, I think it was around 1998 or 2009. You know, it, it's nobody's going to expect you. In fact, they might look at you a little crazy if you're like July 17, 2006. <laughs> I got tinnitus. See what I'm saying? Right. And, you know, I'm a weird guy, right? I showed my my me book down there earlier. I remember I remember the first time I heard the ringing in my ears. It was that first 240 range. Luck have it, I have my I have all of my range cards from my entire military service. So I am a weirdo like that. So don't judge me. But you know, again, just like Travis said, you don't need to know exact dates. Just because a weirdo like me keeps everything and can can afford that, the VA doesn't expect the VA doesn't even expect the VA can't even get their own records straight sometimes. <laughs> so they can't expect you to know every date of everything that you've ever been through, right? Yeah, and that'll just kind of help you overcome that because right. it will come up. Well, when did you get it? You know. Well, Oh, on or around. I mean, and, and that's how you go about it and talk about the noise exposure. Talk about the and, and if you've had multiple noise exposures, talk about it. Weapons qualifications like in the Army. I mean, you spend sometimes 12 out there, 12 hours a day during weapons qualifications. Right. Oh, yeah. Whether you're shooting or Live not. fire ranges. Yep. All oh, yeah. Stuff. And then yep. so you're around, you know, you're around all those loud noises and exposures. Um, one of my Air Force friends. He got tinnitus because he worked around generators. The generators are really, really loud. Um, a lot of um, Navy personnel, when I talk to them, they'll talk about, I don't know, I've, never, I've been on a cruise ship. You can't really compare. <laughs> but apparently, like, <laughs> these Navy ships, Andy, you know, I guess, like, they're really, really loud, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Well, and, you know, and, and just, you know, go, not to not to beat a dead horse, but just going back to, look, a lot of our first ever, you know, loud noise exposure was either, you know, sometimes in basic, some basic trainings have, you know, an event, a culminating event where they maybe throw those, those mock uh, mortars, right? Those mortar sims. Um, a lot of times you'll, you know, obviously your first time at a rifle range. I know a lot of services will, you know, I know in the army, especially every single, um, you know, basic training, they at least get you hands on on a machine gun at least once in basic training, whether it's a saw or a 240. So you can really just pinpoint, look, hey, look, you know, starting from basic training to the end of my career, we were, we were around these loud noises. Uh, every year I went to the rifle range, whatever. So yeah, again, not to beat a dead horse, but it can encompass your entire career, say from this year to this year. You don't have to put from, oh, this month of this year, I remember this. No, it's the culmination of all those loud noises that I went through for four to 20, 30 years, however long you stayed in, right? So exactly. that's, all, that's all I'll say. Exactly. That. And you know, and here's another thing, and this is so important, all right? Y yes, it just so happens to be that a lot of you that struggle with tinnitus do struggle with hearing. Mm -hmm. But you do not have to have hearing loss to be struggling with tinnitus. I'm, right. I'm one of those. Um, I can actually hear relatively well. Um, yep. Andy's the same way. So, like, it Strangely. doesn't have to be that way. <laughs> but um, I actually had a really good friend of mine. Um, he, I guess he didn't listen to my coaching very well. But he went into a, um, like, we, we taught school together. But he went um, to a tinnitus CMP exam. And he went ahead and started laying it thick about how he was having hearing issues as well, which is valid. He does have hearing issues, um, but they pretty much made it an excuse to not service connect him. So yeah. point being, whether this is tinnitus or any other CMP exam you might be going, you want to keep the focus on whatever that issue is. So he was turned down. I helped him overcome it. Uh, he appealed it. He won his appeal a few months later. But he would not have had to have gone through all that trouble if he just didn't go if he didn't go in there and talk about hearing loss at a tinnitus exam. He should right. have just focused on the tinnitus. And that's what I encourage all of you to, to do the same. Now, if you do have hearing loss, you can always go back later and file a claim for hearing loss. And then at that hearing loss CMP exam, then you go all you go all out hearing loss. Right. So, and I know that can be confusing, right? Uh, Dr. Travis, because a lot of times, well, almost every time in your tinnitus exam, they're going to put you in a hearing booth. So yes. a lot of veterans get tripped up there and they think, okay, well, this is a hearing test. Um, it's a hearing CMP. I want to focus on the hearing, but really you want to harp on those symptoms that you have first. I have tinnitus, the ringing in my ears. This is, it's been going on since the military. It persists to this day. 
They're going to ask you about your hearing at some point, obviously, because they're going to throw you in a booth, right? But don't get confused. It is a tinnitus C&P exam. They're just going to test your hearing at the same Correct. time. Correct. The VA, they have a duty to assist, so they're just looking to see um, if you also have hearing loss. And for, for VA standards, um, the, that hearing has got to be really, really bad to, to yeah. even get rated, let alone get a percentage for it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they just have to look at that, and, and they, they go through the, the motions. But after they go through the motions, like, you know, that doctor – that audiologist, they're going to have that conversation with you. Sometimes it's before, sometimes it's after and keep it on the tinnitus. Don't, oh, I really can't hear out of my left ear. Great. I'm sorry that you can't hear out of your left ear, but you know what? That's going to be a different claim down the line. Keep, mm -hmm. keep things separated. Okay. Um, big, big, big piece of advice right there, you know, and, and remember again, tinnitus is not a light bulb. Of course, of course there are noises that will make it go off there's unexpected noises that'll make it go from like being there to like okay now you can like really hear it like it's really loud or <laughs> that um straight up quietness but um i would almost call it a, a trick they'll ask veterans they'll say well when do you have tinnitus and if you say uh at night you'll probably not get service connected instead what you say is all the time but i hear it more at night or exactly. after, a, after being exposed to a, a louder noise, it, it kicks in even into high gear, but it's always yes. there in the background. I would say always there in the background at least, right? Yes, exactly. Andy, you ordered that so well, sir. All right, great job. Yeah. <laughs> um, so look, you know, we, we've talked a lot about tinnitus. We've talked about, you know, the, the nexus of it. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, hmm, tinnitus, 10%. Well, some of you might already be at 50, 60, 70 percent. What's what's a little 10 percent tonight is going to do? Probably thinking not much. Well, maybe not much. But for a lot of you today who are on the fence, maybe you came across us and you've never filed for a VA disability claim before. This is called the, the doorway claim. This is the gate opener to all kinds of other claims, because once you're service connected for tinnitus, you have a service connection. And that means that you're eligible for VA health care. And all these other benefits. So it really, it really is a big deal. And, um, you know, I am, I'm a hundred PNT now, but if I go back in time, just a few years, um, and when I first got that, um, tinnitus service connection, oh, I was so happy. I, I was getting that extra $144 a month. Right. But yeah, and it opens you up for me, a lot of things too, right? Like oh, your, yeah. DV, your DV plates, stuff the like that. Healthcare, you know? though, the, yep. the healthcare, like at that moment, I was eligible for the healthcare. So I was able to cancel my employer's plan because qualifying for VA healthcare is considered a qualifying event. I canceled my employer's healthcare plan. I didn't have to worry about deductibles or premiums anymore. That saved me money. I had peace of mind uh, knowing that I could go get my medical issues addressed. So um, there's a lot of reasons to go for it. But but even more so, if you're further along on your journey and, you know, it, it's still good because of the world of secondaries, Andy. And Andy, I'd love for you to maybe kind of elaborate and put some teasers out about some of the secondaries people can get with tinnitus. Sure. You know, um, with tinnitus, what does that do? Right. Um, for me, I know there are times where it creates a lack of focus. Um, sometimes I can't sleep and it can affect that stuff can affect your mental health. Right. So. Just because, you you know, tinnitus is maybe the only thing that you have does not mean that, you're, that the door is shut on you for anything else, right? Mental health conditions, if what lifestyle impact, right? So it's hard to hear others. Others are having to repeat themselves all the time. Maybe embarrassing, right? Maybe give you social anxiety that can be really frustrating. Um, feels like you can't escape it. Like it's always there. Your concentration and memory issues are all, you know, thrown into whack. Uh, maybe you have a short, shorter fuse with friends. You're more quick to anger um, your family you know, the, the relationship with your family is struggling, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's a big time mental health, mental health issue, right? So boom, you can secondary mental health with that. Get with a coach, get a diagnosis, get a nexus. Boom. Right. That's mental right. health. Big time. You can get a hundred percent for mental health alone. I am walking, talking, you know, proof of that. I am a hundred percent for combat PTSD alone. Not to mention all the musculoskeletal and body issues I have, but for mental health, it is big time, right? It um, is. It, yeah. So think of it as like tinnitus is the door opener, but secondary to that tinnitus, you could get um, a, a mental health claim. There, you can have headaches secondary to tinnitus. There's all Nears. kinds of different routes you can go. And, yeah. and the reality is for a lot of people, and everybody's a little bit different, everybody's situation is a little bit different, but 
Um, when I talk to veterans on a daily basis that have tinnitus, they tell me that they suffer with major insomnia. They have a hard time falling asleep at night and staying asleep. Well, if you don't sleep well, it's going to naturally make you moody and irritable and short fuse throughout the day, right? And insomnia is quality of life just goes down, you know. Yeah, and everything just goes downhill really, really quick. So, um, I, don't underestimate tinnitus. And also, if this is something you've been thinking of, I'm reading comments here from members of the audience. Um, Lee Lee Kernan. He says he served in Vietnam from 63 to 67. Um, well, I assume Vietnam during that time frame. Um, so I really don't know when it started. So, Lee, it goes back to what we talked about earlier, right? I provided a perfect example. If you served 63 to 67, you would say on or around, you know, 1965. You know, on or around June 1965, I noticed I had this ringing in my ear that would never go away. And the reason that you weren't successful is because you went there for a hearing test. And you went there for hearing and you didn't really focus on the tinnitus. And this time around, if you go on it, if you go for the tinnitus, it'll likely be a very, very different story for you. Okay. What other questions do we have? Um, Barry, Barry Cadill, he says, hell, hell, I never knew I could file for this. I was always told there was nothing they could do for it. Abs absolutely. You can well, there's, file nothing, for there's it. nothing they could do to cure it but they can definitely pay you for it, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, Jose A. Nunez Ramos says, if I am out of service, that I can feel some application. Absolutely. Um, and, and, and to that point, there, there are no time specifications. I was out almost 11 years before I filed for a VA disability claim because I had um, a good friend of mine he was on his way out and, you know, and, and, and nowadays, apparently they, they get all kinds of briefings and they're told, go do X, Y, Z. They get a lot of help. They get a lot of help. And I thought, I literally said, oh, I'm, there's no way I've been out too long. They won't even look at me. None of that, none of that is all garbage. None of that is true. It does not matter how long you have been out, especially if you've been out for a while. Tonight, this is going to be probably one of the easiest claims you can do to, to get your foot in the door. All right. It really is. Just get with it. Look, look, folks, get with a coach. It'll it'll make this whole process so much more simplified for you. Um, you know, there's the benefits that come with VA Claims Insider. Just talk about the education. Of it. We have our we have our education director right here in front of you. Um, talk about some of those benefits. I mean, gosh, just the endless amount of education benefits that are involved in VACI. Absol absolutely. I mean, Number one, you're going to get your own dedicated coach. So you're going to have a person that you can call, text, email, follow up with, uh, do Zoom calls with. They're going to guide you from A to Z. So some of you might be thinking, well, I don't even know where to start. Um, I don't have evidence. Coach is going to help you get everything together. They're going to explain everything that needs to be done. And um, you're not going to be doing it alone. And collectively, as a whole organization, we have almost 200 years of experience mm -hmm. in the VA disability realm. That is a lot of years of experience. Okay? Right. And, and even without evidence, like what this whole class is about is tinnitus. It's like Travis said, it's the foot in the door claim. You don't necessarily need evidence. You just need your DD-214 and proof that you served, which the VA should already have. And then say, you know, these are my, this was my MOS or AFSC or what have you. And these are my loud noise exposures. Yeah. You don't, you don't need like medical evidence per se for a tinnitus for a tonight's claim. All right. But what you do need for sure is you need somebody. And, and I appreciate you all for being here. And if you took really good notes, this is going to help you be successful, but you need that coach. You need that accountability partner who's going to really help make sure that you're successful as you go through this process. All right. Um, you know, if you got in your car right now, could you drive, you know, if Andy tried to explain where he lived, could you drive to his house without a GPS? Probably not, or you could, but it's going to be a lot harder, right? But, you know, we're your GPS. We're going to guide you. We're going to guide you along the way. We're going to make sure that you get there. And for those of you that are old school and you still use the, the you know, printed off roadmaps, we're your roadmap. Mm -hmm. Why would you go somewhere you don't know without a roadmap? Right. Like, we can't physically file your claims for you, but we can give you the 
some dang good instructions, some dang good walkthroughs and help you out with it. You know, um, we can, we can strategize for you. We look at your e-benefits. We look at your, you know, all the stuff that you provide to us and we could say, Hey, look, you have an in here. You have it. This, this could be a secondary condition. This could be a primary. Oh, wait, you have that in your medical records from the, from the army. And you haven't filed for that yet. Well, here, let's get some new and relevant medical evidence and add it on top of there and, you know, show that it's, that it's, that it's still ongoing and let's get you a claim submitted. You know, like Travis said, we are your GPS. We can guide you through this. Um, not everyone's going to get to a hundred, but dang it, we're going to get you closer than anybody else can get you. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Um, if I'm saying this name, uh, right. Is it, uh, John Ramos, um, uh, posted at 1146. He says, can you claim insomnia as secondary to tinnitus? Absolutely. You Absolutely. can. That's like probably one of the main secondaries that goes, um, secondary to tinnitus. Um, yeah, yeah, Jerry, I wish there was a cure too. Unfortunately there's not, but there's a lot of, um, a lot of things you can do. Um, I have one of those, I have like this rainbow air system in my house that I use and I just turn it on and then that noise kind of keeps it from being too quiet. And then, um, in the past I would have TVs in my rooms and then I would just fall asleep with the TV on. I turned on like the history channel so I could fall asleep. You know, yeah. something like that. Um, yeah, my fiance has like three fans running because she's always hot, but uh, the fans help me out. So <laughs> I'm always, I'm, I'm, I'm always like under a cover because it's so cold in there because she has the fans on, but it does help with the tinnitus. It really, truly does. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But it, unfortunately, there is no cure and there probably will never be a cure, but you should definitely be getting compensated for it. Yeah. Um, let's see here. What else we got? Um, Ricky. Rossell says my tinnitus was den denied also due to no lack of hearing loss. Well, mm -hmm. you just need to get with the coach. We'll, we'll look at that decision letter. If you lost your decision letter, your coach will be able to walk you through the process of getting another one. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, look at the, look at the rationale they gave you and then uh, your coach will come yeah. up with a way to fight that for you. Let's see here. Not true. Do, 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 if you could read out loud, sorry. No, you're good. Um, we got some retired law enforcement officers. Awesome. Fantastic. Just don't go in there talking about all your law enforcement career highlights. Um, <laughs> Justine Taylor says, yes, my husband too. When our daughter <laughs> screams. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Loud noises. Unexpected. We'll, we'll do it. Um, Steve asked uh, what happens if you, if they cannot find your medical records, um, you can always request them. Um, I don't know if we have that link they could put in the chat. There's a way to request your medical records online. You can also request your C file, which isn't your necessarily your, your service medical records, but it's, it's your, all of your VA stuff. So if, if they can't find your medical records, um, if the VA can't, you might've been in that situation where you're, um, I don't know what years you were in, but there was a fire in, was it Louisiana, Dr. Travis? I think they're um, in St. Louis. It was in St. Louis, Louis. Okay. and everything, um, everything burnt up in that fire. And a lot of you who are here today, like I already know a lot of you have already put in um, a records request. A lot of you are trying to locate records. Some of you have moved around 20 times in the last 20 years and you just can't find your records. You don't know about where to go about even starting. Well, I want to put every single one of you that's in that situation at ease. You do not need records to get started. Right. At some point, as we're going through the process and we're moving through the VA disability realm, could some of those records help us a little bit? Yes. But what you need to do is sign up and meet with the coach. We partner with um, a, a team of medical providers that can help you obtain uh, medical record evidence. Okay. Um, we, we can help you with that. We can assist you with that. We can help you with what's called statement supported claims. We can't do it for you. We can walk you through that process. Um, we got you. So if you're just waiting because you put in a, you know, a freedom of information act request, you know, nine months ago, you don't have to wait. Don't wait. You're just wasting your time. Reach out to reach out to the coach. We dropped that link. See, William asked, can sleep apnea be a secondary condition to tinnitus? Uh, Dr. Travis, I don't think so. <laughs> sleep apnea is, it, correct me if I'm wrong here. I don't want to put out disinformation. You're not wrong. You're, it's so you're, most, yeah, it's the most denied condition. You're, you're not wrong. Has, has it happened before? Have there been people that have pulled that off? Yes, but I don't think it's ever happened here. And I think maybe it's happened a total of like uh, seven times in all history of VA claims. It's just a yeah. rare, it's a very rare thing. And and sleep apnea is the toughest claim to service connect. 
Right. And it's becoming Unless, more it's, and it's becoming more and more denied, even with things that we that we were we used to be able to connect them to certain things. And now they put the kibosh on that. Right. If you have service connected sinus issues, it's a little bit easier, but it's not that's not really a route that we would look at with tinnitus. So if you're thinking you've got tinnitus and you're thinking of like good secondary. So just some things to keep in mind. Mental health. OK, that's going to be one. Headaches, headaches is going to be number two. Andy, can you think of any more past that? Meniere's, so. Meniere's can also cause tinnitus, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then you know, just so everybody knows, you can have a secondary of a secondary of a secondary infinitely, and I refer to it as spider webbing, right? And if I hate spiders, I absolutely hate them. <laughs> I was cleaning up a brush pile behind my um, house the other day. There was one the size of my hand. And I'm pretty sure that it it had teeth under it. Okay, I had that entire brush pile bulldozed out after that. Like, <laughs> I, yeah. But anyways, if you look at a spider web, like the the core center of it, you know, that's like the main issue. That's going to be your main claim. And then like it just kind of spreads out, and it spreads out. So for example, let's say that you get service connected for tinnitus at 10. percent You're also dealing with mental health issues because of that tinnitus. So secondary to the tinnitus, you've got mental health issues. You might have some headaches as well. So now both of those are linked secondary. So now, hypothetically, we're just going to say that you're at 80 or 90 percent overall. OK, just making this up. this round number. Well, OK, because of the medication that you're taking for your uh, headaches and because of the medication you're taking for your mental health, well, that's causing other issues with your body, right? So maybe um, because you're on all those medications, you have to get up and run to the bathroom more often than you'd like. Okay, IBS. And that you, so that would be a secondary of a secondary case in point. Absolutely. Let's see here. Pretty impossible. Nothing could be located except for from MEPS. So it looks like Steve's having a really tough time getting his records. Um, you know, that would be... That wouldn't be a question. Uh, Travis, I'd defer to you as far as um, folks that are having a real hard time getting their records. Would you know kind of where to point them? Yes, um, they can actually do that on the VA website. Mm -hmm. And then um, a, a coach can actually guide them through that entire process, too, from A to Z. Um, but they can do that on the actual VA website. OK. Let's see here how to get your VA. OK, um, for 100 percent p and is paid tuition reimbursable i was told you have to have a minimum um not totally sure what you're asking there thomas but what i can tell you sounds sounds like he's saying he paid his tuition already and he is wondering if that since he's 100 percent pnt if they will retroactively repay him i think it's yeah i think what no. it is I th yeah i think what it is is if you still owe they will pay off with the remainder of your balance right when you hit 100% permanent total, if you have a federal student loan balance, not a private student loan balance, but a federal one, um, they will forgive the balance of those student loans. But if they were already paid off or if um, you paid cash as you went, no, you can't get reimbursed on that. Right. Um, can dental issues be secondary to mental health? Um, so let's let's talk about that for a second. Maybe um, teeth grinding? I, huh? Maybe like something like teeth grinding? Yeah, 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 exactly. So um, it, it does happen, you know, like I, I know that I actually just had a crown put in um, for that reason. Like I, I grind, but I didn't go through the process of getting it service connected only because I made it to 100 percent before I needed to do that. But but yeah, so like maybe you have anxiety and that's a mental health condition. Well, one of your anxious tics is that you grind your teeth or when you get stressed, you subconsciously start grinding your teeth. So that could be an example of a dental condition that would be secondary to um, uh, a service connected disability. And as far as dental care goes with the VA, you have to be 100 percent. It doesn't matter if you're 100 percent or 100 percent permanent total to utilize their dental program. But it doesn't matter if you have a service connected dental issue or not. When you're at 100 percent, they will take care of all of your dental um, issues. If you're not 100 percent, they will still take care of your dental. But uh, that's only if you have a service connected dental issue at that point. All right. So it looks like we're coming up on top of the hour. I want to thank you all so much for being here. I greatly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be present. Um, you all were a very engaging group 
Andy. I absolutely love co-hosting with you. We'll have to do this again. Um, Thanks, bro. brother. Yeah. Hey, and yeah, just to reiterate, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, I know time is short. We, I wish I could stay here all day, but uh, we do have clients to uh, veteran clients to engage with. Just want to remind you, uh, we are at VA Claims Insider on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, anywhere uh, you, you find us on social media. Just type in VA Claims Insider in that Google search engine will pop up. Uh, thank you so much for all of your service. Thank you for what you do still for this country. Um, you're all a bunch of great citizens in my heart. So uh, we'll hopefully see you guys soon in the next classes.